Welcome, you're watching Business Venture Exchange powered by IAZ and we're privileged to have on set today the Registrar of the Pensions and Insurance Authority here in Zambia, that is Mr. Martin Lubinga. Martin, welcome to Business Venture Exchange. Thank you Faye for inviting me to this uh, uh, interview. Thank you. Yes. Now talking about uh, the Pensions and Insurance Authority which has been making great strides and growing in the past couple of years. Tell us why does PIA exist and what is its role in the insurance sector? Thank you so much Faith. Uh, the Pensions and Insurance Authority was established uh, in 1997 basically to, to supervise and regulate the industry. Um, uh, we, we, we focusing on issues like stability of the, the industry. We're looking at uh, protection of uh, policyholders. We're also looking at viability solvency of these entities to ensure that uh, they continue providing the service that they're supposed to. Basically, those are the main uh, issues that we, we try and uh, deal with, uh, and, and, and that can be done uh, through a number of interventions like uh, inspections. Um, we have stakeholder meetings to try and ensure that uh, we are actually moving according to uh, how we, we are supposed to as an industry. Now, as Registrar of PIA, we're here at the Insurance Conference for 2017 in Livingston, and you mentioned in your speech some key issues and, 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 and uh, challenges that are being experienced by the sector and how you are regulating that. Maybe let's begin from there. The Pension Insurance Authority, together with the other financial regulators at the Bank of Zambia, Securities and Exchange Commission, um, worked on the various uh, pieces of legislation. And we did look at the Insurance Act and also the Pension Regulation Act. Um, these uh, documents were submitted to the Financial Sector Development Plan and um, the, the bills were actually submitted to the Ministry of Finance. So this has been about four years and um, a lot of things have happened which um, we needed to actually sit down again to have a relook at the, the, the submitted bill to try and clean it up so that uh, it could still be relevant because uh, uh, quite some time has, uh, has passed. So basically the, 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 the Insurance Act, um, we have certain things that we are bringing in. Um, for instance, uh, I did mention that uh, in the past, um, the various categories of insurance were just lumped up as insurance, but now we have separated the insurers and also the reinsurance. Yeah. Now, one of the issues that has been coming out in uh, the discussions over the years is uh, how do we supervise or regulate uh, reinsurance, especially as it relates to uh, reinsurance going out. Yeah, we, we, we are fully alive to the fact that insurance is an international business because you need to, to share risks all over. Yeah, but um, to some extent there is need to have some of the resources, the premiums remain in the country to, to develop um, uh, our country. Um, in some countries there are national reinsurance companies. These are actually companies under government. In some countries, there is an arrangement where government will partner with the, the private sector. Uh, the, the intention is that um, we have a little more resources for the development of our, uh, our, our, our economy. You're aware that uh, um, these are monies that uh, are used in some economy to build quite a lot of infrastructure. But for us, we're basically sending uh, all the money is out. The, 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 the other issue when you come to reinsurance um, which needs to be uh, looked at is the issue of um, uh, the industry players themselves. They have to, 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 to choose to try and ensure that most of the, the premium that they collect remain within the, the country. For instance, we have uh, some reinsurance companies that are registered within Zambia. How much of that do they take to those uh, 
uh, insurance companies. Um, they, they, they can choose to either reinsure locally part of the money and some of it can be taken out. All we are saying is that there is need to, to try and bring, you know, re, you know, have a little more money uh, retained within, within the economy. So the, 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 the provision on reinsurance will deal with some of those, uh, those issues. Um, of course, uh, the other issue that uh, we are looking at has to do with uh, uh, regulation in terms of risk-based capital. Um, you know, what has been happening is uh, we just have one flat capital requirement. And that is kind of limiting. But it's also a risk because uh, um, unlike risk-based capital you know, approach, this one basically there is a risk that even entities that are not sub that cannot uh, get more uh, risks keep on getting into these risks. Meanwhile, their their capital is quite low. But risk-based capital will look at uh, issues like. Uh, before you go into, you take up a risk, you must look at your level of capital. And if your level of capital is low, we'll tell you that, no, you cannot take on this risk because your level of capital is quite low. So there, there is that interplay between the level of capital and the, the risk that you, you take. So it's, it's, it's something that um, um, will, uh, will have a wide range of players within the market, those that are strong enough will have to take more risks because they're able to, to withstand uh, the pressure if there is a, a claim. But those that are starting and have low capital levels will basically look at uh, uh, taking risks that they're able to, 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 to deal with. So that's one uh, of the provisions that we think uh, will actually um, uh, assist us in, 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 in this market. Um, there, there are also issues to do with the, how to deal with um, complaints, um, issues of um, consumer protection. What disclosures uh, are, are made to the clients? Uh, a client, uh, before they take on insurance, they must have enough information for them to make a wise decision as to whether to take that policy or not. And like a situation where when there is a claim, that's when they get to know that uh, they, there were certain uh, things that uh, they should have known at the time they were making a decision. So basically, we, we, we're trying to enhance uh, consumer protection uh, provisions so that we can uh, uh, have the uh, policyholders adequately protected. And, and so it, it, it will require uh, a lot of uh, education uh, to the public to understand that and demand a little more information before they can actually make a, uh, a decision. Uh, th there is also the issue of um, complaints handling. Um, there is discussion of having uh, an ombudsperson who will look at handling. Uh, complaints. At the moment, the Pension Insurance Authority uh, is handling issues of complaints. Meanwhile, it's, you, you lose focus on supervision and, and, and regulation. But when you have a specified uh, uh, entity or individual who deal with complaints, I think they will have a little more time to attend to the various complaints that uh, are currently like coming to, to the authority. So in a nutshell, uh, those are some of the issues that uh, you, 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 you would uh, come across in, in, the, in, in the bill. Uh, but I also wanted to mention that uh, other than the bill, um, the minister uh, about two years ago issued a statutory instrument to deal with the capital. Um, we think that uh, that will strengthen the industry because what it does is that uh, because the entities will put in a little more capital it means they will be able to take up more risks yeah so I think you heard from the discussions as they are going on right now 
it's, it's better you have fewer stronger or strong entities than have so many of them but weak entities. And then this issue of uh, um, complaints, you know, claims not being paid is really uh, an issue which can be handled if you have big and strong entities that, that are able to, to deal with the, uh, the, those, those issues. At the moment, uh, there is a risk that uh, the industry uh, is people are losing confidence in them because uh, some of the entities could not are not able to pay uh, uh, claims. If they pay, it's not on time. Uh, some of them that have paid, sometimes you you find they are not able because the claim is big. They have to pay in installments, and, and then that's not right. Yeah. So we we are hoping that um, uh, by October this year, all the insurance entities will be fully capitalized and what it means is that uh, those that uh, will not be fully capitalized a decision uh, will have to be taken you remember I think you heard the minister say the uh, those that are not fully capitalized they they, they will drop off of, of, of the market but we don't want to to push people out of uh, industry so the entities and in, in particular the shareholders must start uh, making decisions. They need to start collaborating, working with others so that there are consolidations or they can go on the stock exchange list to get uh, people come into their business um, or they can merge with other existing entities to, 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 to come up uh, with stronger institutions. And these institutions will be able to serve the public adequately. Thank you very much, Mr. Lurimba, for your time on Business Venture Exchange Africa. Thank you. Thank you. We had the Registrar of the Pensions and Insurance Authority, and that is Mr. Martin Lurimba, who was talking about the key and the pertinent issues in the pensions and insurance industry and what the PIA is doing to regulate the sector. Thank you for watching. My name is Fetish Tulangoma.